Hello, everybody. Welcome to the first episode of Onion Soup, the show where we pull back the layers of metaphysics and reality in order to demystify spirituality. Now, it is my honor and privilege to welcome our first guest, and it's my dad. (laughs) My father is a retired Marine, a retired police officer, fireman, paramedic. And when he decided to retire from the force, he started to delve deeper into his own spirituality. And since then, he's become a Reiki master and has also acquired his Aleikis in the Ifa faith. So, hey, Dad, how's it going? I'm good. How are you, son? Doing wonderful, wonderful. So let's just dive right into it. So a lot of people ask me why onion soup and what onion soup means. And I think it's funny because it's actually your brainchild. It's something that you and I spoke about many years ago. So I want to ask you what everybody else asked me. Why onion soup? <laughs> why onion soup? Um, that idea came about, first of all, um, I started doing a, a discussion group. And we started talking about a lot of different subjects. And it became like a, you know, when old school, you sit around grandma's house and you're eating, having dinner or whatever. Then, you know, we were doing it in the wintertime. So it was like, you know, a nice bowl of soup. And then the whole idea of onion soup, because as we're, you know, after a couple of sessions, um, when you're having discussions, you start realizing it's one layer after another layer after another layer, you just keep peeling it back. And as you got deeper into it, it's like more enlightenment come, more questions and stuff like that come. So the whole idea of onion soup, soup come back, just getting a group of people to have just a nice, relaxing, um, deep, as people tend to say, oh, it's so deep, and just a deep conversation. So I got a big, nice, big bowl of deep soup with all the vegetables and I mean, everything that when you're done, you know, you feel full, you know, mm-hmm. you're not, you're, you're, you're spiritually full, you're mentally full, you're emotionally full. So that's where onion soup comes from. That's awesome. And that it's funny because I think a lot of people don't realize that onions actually have a lot of metaphysical and spiritual meanings as well. Onions actually in some cultures represent life and death. And as you dive, and the reason for that is because as you dive deeper into the onion, the fruit, I mean, the vegetable itself starts becoming more bitter, but you can actually cook out that bitterness and it can be sweet. And onions are also extremely good for heart health and for bone density and things of that nature. So they've been used for millennia and various holistic practices. So my question to you is, what is spirituality? Because you went from working in what I call the all-American hero fields. <laughs> you went from that to diving really deeply into spiritualism and to metaphysics. So what was that process and what was that journey like? And what is spirituality? Um, you asked me a couple questions wrapped up in that. And it gets very um, in-depth indeed so spirituality for me well I, i'll go from my old school way out you know when i first started this journey or started this journey would be a good term i'll say when i was first identified that i was on this journey because um i was i was born into this you know I, i've been having a um a metaphysical esoteric experience as far as long back as I can remember, uh, mm-hmm. the, the term spirituality for me it has to do with, you know, being raised in the Christian meth, uh, what is it, United Methodist Church, you know, very deep rooted in the that Christianity. Um, and then when I left home, you know, at 17, I started studying different faiths, reading, you know, reading in depth into different beliefs from Islam, Judaism, Buddhism, Hinduism, you know, and, you know, some of the books that I've read, like the Mara Barta, just opened a, a whole other world to me. Um, I've always been in touch with my ancestors. I didn't know it growing up. Um, you know, my grandmother, both my grandmothers, both my parents' side, for one. But then, 
I didn't know it as a little kid, but you know, I always had a spiritual connection to my past ancestors. Um, as I got older, you know, more indoctrinated into Christianity, that stuff kind of got pushed <laughs> pushed to the backside to be easy with that. Um, so I kind of went away from it. And, you know, just like I say, and the indoctrination from my perception of Christianity and all that stuff just kind of pushed all that um, spiritualism, naturalism, and all that stuff to the backside. Then once I left home and got into the military, it was really after Desert Storm, when I came back from Desert Storm, when I really started diving more deeply and letting go of the um, the way that I was raised in Christianity. Because it, it, so spirituality, for me, spirituality is like an energy. It is an energy. I can't say it's like an energy. It is energy. Um, and one of the ways I would explain it to people in, you know, my the Anusu classes, when we're talking about it, I said, it's like electricity. Electricity runs through everything in our society. Your phone, this, this video, the lights and stuff. And so when I get down to, we start talking about the light, that's the energy that goes through the light bulbs that illuminate. That's what we're seeing. And it, it's, it's in everything. You know, in Star Wars, they call it the Force. You know, it, it is in everything. It's, a, it, it's in all of us. And once I start to identify that, you know, I start saying, you know, I get the spirituality of it. And you get different cultures, call it different things, chi, prana, all these different terms. But when you really start digging into these societies and these these belief systems and get past the dogma of it, you'll see there is a connection. It's, it's in all of us. It's in everything. And so um, that's what I identify with spirituality um, as I would say over the past several years, I would say within the past five or ten years, it's become such a cliche thing that, it, you know, when you say, well, I'm spiritual, and everybody like, oh, I'm spiritual too. You know, and I'm, and I, we all are. I get that. What I also realize that, again, as I go deeper into what that means for me, it, it becomes not a word per se, but a lifestyle. You start to live your life in um, accordance to what a lot of these beliefs talk about. And I don't want to use the word religious because that, in my mind, it brings up a connotation of dogma. So I would say more of a spiritual, natural way of living. You know, understand that we are all connected. We are all one. Um, <laughs> as I'm saying this, I'm starting to think about the Matrix. You know, when um, Neo is in the simulation with Morpheus with a lady in the red dress. You know, so for me with spirituality, everybody's spiritual. Everybody has that energy source of the boundaries created of the universe flowing through them, but everybody is not aware of that. Some people are still connected to the system per se. And so they'll say, yeah, I'm spiritual, but they're still connected to the system, living a, a life that is indicative of being connected in the matrix. So uh, I, I, I kind of start saying just more of energy, you know, instead of saying spiritual because, again, the connotations. I mean, hey, the people in the Crusades were spiritual. Mm -hmm. You know, they were spiritual as they were being told, hey, we're going to free you of all your sins. You can go rape, pillage, murder, and God's going to forgive you. And they're like, we're spiritual. God wills it. <laughs> now, their idea of spirituality. No, I don't see it that way. But anyway, I probably went a little bit off center. But with, with no, not at all. It's perfectly fine. <laughs> I was like, all right, let's get into that. <laughs> Said a whole lot there. And I agree. I think that when we talk about spirituality and there being an over-encompassing force and energy that persists throughout every molecule throughout the universe, that is spirituality. When we say energy, I oftentimes refer people back to the electromagnetic spectrum. And I'm like, well, we know that every single thing in existence is comprised of molecules and atoms. And as you dive deeper and look, if you could literally take a microscope and zoom in to these atoms, what you would find is that it's mostly just electron clouds. 
and free floating energy, like quantifiable energy inside of these atoms. And then when you zoom back out, that's when you start getting your solid figures and solid mass and what we would consider matter and things like that. So what is that? What is the energy that's inside of there that basically creates the matter that creates the mass? And uh, when I think spirituality, I think about the process of getting to know and understand what that energy is in the first place. And as you start diving into learning what that energy is and start to feel it and embody it, that's when you start creating uh, different spiritual practices in order to do that. Is that kind of <laughs> off of what you were saying? <laughs> yeah. Uh, I guess there's so many different words we can use to um, delve into spirit spirituality i did my air quotes um and, and it, there is no right or wrong way in it because it's all connected you know and and in my reality it all goes back to the source and i hate to say it even that way because we're we're all still the source <laughs> it's just an illusion that we left it um as you were talking about the quant the physics and stuff i'm looking at that book behind your shoulder um, that's a you know quantum physics book that I'm sure came off my books, yeah. <laughs> Many years back, <laughs> I actually think that um, I think the original book that I got from you might have burned in the fire, mm -hmm. and I think I went back and repurchased it because it's really good. So I have to sit back and reread it. Right. So one of the things with with the um, so I, you know again I'm a I'm a big reader. I said all I do I read a lot of stuff. I, and one of the things with me, I've allowed the universe to bring books to me. But when I when I need it shows up or it's introduced to me in one way or the other, and I've learned to live my life that way. You know, let the universe give me my next step, my next course, or whatever it is I need to learn. Um, and so one of the things with going through Hermetica, I read Hermetica. Um, when you was talking, I was actually reminded of a book called Biology Biology of Belief by Bruce, Bruce Lipton. Yeah. And, you know, when you're talking about the, the the atoms and the quanta and stuff and all that information, all that stuff, you know, it's kind of hard for us to grasp that something can actually come from nothing. Mm -hmm. So when you start breaking down an atom, you can go, you know, you can get to a smaller, smaller, smaller particle, you know, and it gets to where, okay, there is no particle. You know, uh, or, or there is no mass or there is no whatever that term that you're looking for, you know, and that's where the some of the funny stuff that comes in to me when you look at um, quantum physics, you know, there's that saying that, you know, when, when somebody is studying, whatever the observer brings to that study, that's mm -hmm. what they create. So if an observer is looking for a smaller mass, event, the universe is going to create it. You know, because again, uh, yeah, well, my thought might go a little bit deeper than what you just asked me. So I guess I'll stay within the paradigm, I guess. No, not at all. <laughs> Take it to where it needs to go. You know, uh, yeah, that whole observation bias, when you start looking, when you have an idea of what you're looking for, that's typically what's presented in front of you. Uh, I want to go back to what you said about allowing the universe to bring things to you. So oftentimes we talk about synchronicities. So can you talk a little bit about what synchronicities are and then how do you allow the universe to bring those things to you? So um, there's a book called Celestial Prophecy. Mm -hmm. When I first read that book, I'm like, it's an awesome book. And in there, it talks about one of the insights and in that insight, it was telling you about, it basically speaks on um, when something is glowing or something is exciting, you're going to feel it inside of you. And it's like it, 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 the universe is saying, this is your next synchronicity to come in. This is your next, well, there's a lot of coincidences. It's just the next thing that happened. And I've learned to trust my feelings. I've learned to say, well, if this is bringing me some a good feeling, um, it, it actually got to a point where I could be in a bookstore, have no idea what book I'm looking for, but some book, it, it's almost like it might move, it might be shimmer, have a little golden shimmer around it or whatever, and it'll show it, it okay, that's the book I need to get. Or I'll be somewhere and somebody will make a comment about something, and it's like, 
You know, that's why okay, well, pick that up. Listen to that. Read that. Pay attention to that. You know, and it was a it was a learned behavior. You know, it was something I, I chose to start paying attention to the more that stuff started standing out, feeling out of the ordinary. Mm-hmm. At the times where I don't know, kind of so ordinary in my life now. Um, on this journey, I also learned how to how to differentiate when something is for me or not for me, and then mm-hmm. I, it, it, it's very easy, you know, because when you start to understand how the universe op- operates, the universe is about it's, it, it, to use the word love is so lacking. To use the word bliss is so lacking. It's so much more than that. It, it, it's a it's a feeling. It's a it's creative. I think when um what's the name of that book? Conversation with God. Oh my God! Conversation with God in that book, and, and, and the, the God is talking to Donald Neil Donald Walsh and mm-hmm. explaining love and fear. And when it goes through the ex- explanation of love, it's like I mean that's it. You know, it's so creative, it's so giving, it's so warm, it's the mother, it's the father, the protective, the, the nurturer, it's all that wrapped in the one. And so when when that when those once I learn to feel those feelings and really see how it resonates with me, it, mm-hmm. it becomes kind of easy for me with those synchronicities. And I'm saying all that because it, it, to me it does go back to synchronicities. So when I can mm-hmm. feel something, if it's feeling like it just resonates with, with my with my core, with my tingling, or it's just a, it's just a feeling, you know. I'm, I might be different for everybody else, but I'm, I've I've come to know and be aware of what it is for me, even when if it's something that at the time might be bringing me some type of stress or some type of anxiety, because what I've started to realize again over the years, sometimes those those stress and those stressors and those anxieties are coming up because they need to be healed and transmuted mm-hmm. into something more positive. And so mm-hmm. it's like, you know, it's like the universe as my father, as my mother said, you know, you, you, you've got this, this belief, this action, this whatever it may be that you're doing that is taking mm-hmm. to have you farther away from the loving source. Let's, let's work on transmuting whatever that is to bring you closer. And sometimes in transmuting, it's, it can be difficult. It can be a challenge. You know, that's part of life. You know, sure. I'm going to have to take a really quick commercial break. I'm loving this. I was like, this is. <laughs> 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 so, <laughs> we'll be right back. <laughs> everybody <laughs> so you were talking about being able to like have a feeling when you go out and saying that this is how i know that this is aligned for me this is how i know that it's been put into my path for me would that be the same thing as when people say i get a vibe off of that or i get a bad vibe i get a good vibe or whatever because when oftentimes when i talk about uh the synchronicities with others and uh, what I tell them is that, well, anytime you get a vibe, the word vibe is short for vibration. So really what it is, is that you're picking up on the vibrational energy that either does or doesn't resonate with you. So, yes, everything is spiritual. Everything is energy. You know, it's just, am I in the position to perceive? Well, I can't even use that term because we're all in a position to perceive. We're always perceiving. It's the, and we're always picking up on the energy. It then it's just determines what what level of energy. So I've gotten to where I'll say high vibration, low vibration. Mm-hmm. You know, and being able to differentiate what that means for me. Because we're all, even when we're unconscious, even when we don't think we are, we're still picking up on those vibrations, one way or the other. You know, when, when I was talking about 
and that can like a break I was thinking about, you know, when I was talking about me picking up on um, the universal stuff when they, when it's for me or whatever. Mm-hmm. I remember I was doing this even back when I was a policeman. You know, I, I, a lot of the calls, I may not have known exactly what the call may be. It might come out, you know, in such and such signal, such and such, whatever, 48, whatever it may be. Um, and before I got there, Oftentimes, if it's a really bad call, somehow I was always prepared for it. I never had a call where somebody was dead or you know one of those crazy things going on to where I'm just walking up on something like, oh crap, it surprises me because something in me had always prepared me. You know, back mm-hmm. in, when I was in the police days, I was still so um, detached. I was detached from. So there was a period in my life, like I said, when I was a kid, up until around eight or nine, I think everything was, my whole life seemed to be operating between the spiritual and the physical. It was hard to, I didn't know it at the time. I never put any thought to it until I became older, looking back, you know, doing you know, my tribal traumas and all that kind of stuff. And looking back at it, I'm like, you know, from my early days, I can remember to around eight or nine, I think I lived in both worlds. You know, and around the time I got around eight or nine, and then you know the whole Christian thing started happening, and you know mm-hmm. being conditioned that that's bad, it's not good, and all that kind of stuff, and then that played a, a major part of my life up until I would say it had to be around the time I was in my mid twenties or early thirties when I really had that okay, let me change this crap around, let me start mm-hmm. getting deeper, you know, let me start reading some of these books that you know were taken out of the, the bible and really started opening my i'll tell you exactly what happened it happened when i came back from desert storm mm-hmm. coming back from desert storm and seeing all the stuff that i saw and the 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 shade was pulled off over my eyes the wool was pulled off over my eyes and i started to see and i started to read and i started to read everything i could history, um, like I said, different religious books, because I wanted to get down to the basis. What was, what is this really about? Mm-hmm. And that reading, you know, it, it is all spiritual. It is all an energetic essence that has been going around this planet from the time that it was created, from the time that it existed, you know, um, and, and yeah. So you asked me about, we were still talking about the synchronicity. What, mm-hmm. I, what I've come to understand for me, um, it, whether it is a, we label it good or bad, there's still the synchronicity because there's still some alternate truths that we still ain't touched yet. 100%. <laughs> we only have a few minutes left. So one question that I really want to ask is, what is consciousness and how would you define consciousness? What is consciousness and how would I define consciousness? Hmm. Um, because there, that's a deep question for one thing. <laughs> that, that's a term I really like to use, my deep question. There are different perceptions that people have of consciousness. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't think that it can actually be put into a description. To me, that's like trying to define this term that people call God mm-hmm. or they call it Allah or whatever this supreme being they put a name to and they say define it just the mere fact of putting a name on it limits it mm-hmm. I see the same thing with consciousness we, we we define consciousness in our however we define it you know I remember you know when you was coming up we didn't let you play certain video games shoot them up games and stuff like that I remember mm-hmm. one day, um, this after you, you know, going off and you doing your own thing, you grown. And I was watching um, Westworld. Mm-hmm. And Westworld, Westworld gave me a different perspective of consciousness. Because truly, how do you define consciousness? Everything mm-hmm. is consciousness. And everything is not consciousness. So mm-hmm. watching video games, I stopped playing fighting video games, shooting video games, because Who's determined? Who's to determine that those characters that you're playing on that video game are not conscious? Who defines that? 
Interesting, interesting. Beautiful. Well, it's been wonderful being able to sit down and spend this time with you and, you know, just talk about consciousness and spirituality and where the idea of onion soup came from. That's just fascinating. We're definitely going to have, have you back on. And thank you, everybody, for tuning in to the first episode of Onion Soup. Be blessed and have a great rest of your day.